this size of a multifamily project uh, here in Warrenville uh, on that property specifically. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kathy Burning. And I'm Steve Burning. And we have resided at 27W271 Volusia Avenue since 1981. I'm here this evening and Steve is here with me to address the council in regard to its economic development plan and in particular the, the significant planned increase in high density housing in this community. At the most recent planned commission meeting, I requested clarification on the city's desire to further develop Warrenville with a significant number of high density residences, namely the significant number of um, rental apartments. In response, I was directed to the most current economic development plan, which I was told was created with the input of stakeholders and community members. So I dug in and I took a look at the plan um, along with some additional documents that are indeed available on the city's website. And I have a lot of questions about the level of community input that was truly considered in actually drafting that plan. First and foremost, the goals of the economic development plan state, collectively, the city's economic development goal and objectives focus on enhancing quality of life in the community by promoting high quality tax generating growth that is sensitive to the community's unique character. Well, I need someone to help me understand the definition of unique character, the definition that perhaps you hold as a council, because that may be, be very, very different than my definition of unique character of this community. And it might be very different <laughs> for those in the audience. And, and I might add <coughs> to that comment that each one of us, every one of us in this room moved to Warrenville at one point in time of our lives, whether it was because our parents started out here and we were born here, or we moved here 38 years ago or 38 months ago. Why did we come here? Did we come here for more apartments? more condominiums, more density, more transients. Transit's not a bad word. It's a real word. People coming and going. That is tough on our school system, period. The community input information that I read and that was available um, in included, and I think Ron uh, mentioned the document um, included as a key theme that the advantages to living in Warrenville centered on maintaining the natural setting, open spaces, as well as its sound fiscal management. That report also includes the following response data regarding what residents like most about Warrenville, and I think this is what Steve's talking about. 98% said, the natural setting, 94% safety, 92% open spaces, 86% environmental quality, 82% housing affordability. So again, help me understand how a significant increase in high density housing will sustain that type of response from community members as to why they chose to live here in the Warrenville community. As I look through additional data provided on your website, namely the Old Town Civic Center Subarea Plan, Volume 2, Technical Analyses and Community Input Summary, I found that the input process was certainly structured to seek the type of input that city planners desi desired, more specifically what they wanted to hear. The input process included approximately 80 participants who were shown images of various types of housing and asked <coughs> to provide their preferences. <coughs> Specifically, <coughs> participants were asked their preferences for townhomes, 
versus townhome rear <coughs> treatment, condominiums, retail, mixed use, streetscape, park, and open space. Interestingly enough, no images of single family homes was provided. Additionally, it was stated that condos were the least desirable due to their density. It seems to me that apartments result in greater density, so I would assume they would be even less desirable. I can only wonder if the same 80 participants were asked specifically about the current development plan, what their responses would be. How then has this information been considered in the current development considerations? In closing, I would say that the council, along with the current administrative staff, have some serious explaining to do with these communities. Thank you. We're against it. Thank you again. Be respectful of your neighbors, please, and the elected officials. Just listen. Listen to everyone, please. So good evening. My name is Bob Abril. I and my wife, Judy, both live at the corner of Point Oak and Landon. We live adjacent to this new construction that's going on building a road. So Saturday evening, as I stood on the deck, after the construction workers finally left, <coughs> I realized just how pleasant and peaceful a community is that we live in. That's going to go away. It's going to go away because we're going <coughs> to go towards high-density population. That's in disconcerting in of itself. There's so many other pieces that are bothering me. What about all the noise? What about all the traffic? What about the light pollution? What about all of the other impact to wildlife? Those are things that <coughs> I moved here for and why I lived in this community. Um, we've enjoyed that. We've enjoyed the safety. Today, my grandchildren can come over and ride their bicycles on the streets, and I know they're safe. I don't think it's going to be that way very soon when you add all this density. On top of that, I'm concerned about the safety of my community. I've been doing a little research, and I found out that in reality, when we add density to our population, we can expect an increase in serious crime. There's actually a report called the SPIA report. Have, have any of you heard of it? Maybe, maybe not. It's a research project that was done <laughs> in Indianapolis. It specifically looked at land use and the relationship to violent crime. And one of the things they identified was a direct correlation between high density and violent crime. Unequivocally, everywhere that they looked, that's what they found. So I think we need to be concerned if we increase our population at 20% that we're going to have a rise in crime. And being right next to that property, I'm very concerned. So I'm asking you to go to bat for us, residents of this community, and help us control the neighborhoods we live in. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jennifer O'Malley. I live at 29 West 441 Albright Street. Um, just going to read what I wrote here because it's easier for me. To <laughs> um, each and one, each one of you have been voted in to represent the city, the citizens of the city. In the zoning and planning meeting, I heard many citizens ask that the city hear them. Some said they thought this project was already decided. Thus, we were wa wasting our time. After having it put through zoning unanimously, it looks like this is true. I just want to cut, uh, touch on a couple points. One is the TIF. The TIF is designed to revitalize a declining business district. It is not for a new multifamily development put in on a farm field. That's not what it's for. It's to take the business that is declining and raise it up and invite more business in. And we need more business, we need more retail. I am not against any kind of growth whatsoever, but I am against this growth. Um, maybe the project decision has already been decided, I don't know. A compromise, maybe, is there a compromise in here? I don't know. Um, maybe senior housing. There's no senior housing at all in Warrenville. It would be huge demand, low density, less cars for parking, less po pollution to the wetlands, and huge profits for the developers, which I think they're interested in. Um, the growth needs to be done responsibly. 
and you are responsible for that. And you need to hear what we are saying to you. I cannot believe that not one person on that zoning and planning commission listened to what the people were telling them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nancy LaBianco and I live at 3 South 451 Paterman. And I would just like to tell you I'm against this since the beginning and I think it's a terrible decision to add more apartments to this. I'm, I'm okay with single family housing and townhouses, but apartments I think are awful. An awful decision and I feel just like everybody else before me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Annette Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. And we're at 29W451 Amber Lane. Um, I can speak in front of middle school students all day long. I get in front of adults. My voice is shaky, so I apologize. Um, I would like to see the property stay as they are. I'm the farmer's daughter, okay? I love farming. I love the agriculture. <clears throat> but I'm also a millennial. Like it or not, I'm a millennial. And when Chris and I first got married, despite my parents begging us to stay in Warrenville, we went to Oak Park. We went to Oak Park because we had public transportation at our doorstep, because we had walkability to restaurants, nightlife, anything that we wanted as a young person, we had at our, at our steps. When we raised our, or when we had our first child, we came back to Warrenville because we knew this was a family-oriented community. And that's where we wanted to raise our kids. And we now have three children in Warrenville. To quote um, what I printed of the Strategic and Economic Development Plan, um, there's a few things in here that don't sound like they quite fit with the Everton Project. Um, it says that it's most often is desired the focus on development along Route 59 corridor and an increase in restaurants and shopping venues for residents. Um, developing along Route 59 and creating gathering places were listed as the top overall priorities. Of the 84 out of 325 completed surveys, that's 25%. If I gave a survey to my students and I only got 25% of them, or 25% completed a survey, I couldn't say that I was the best teacher because five of 20 kids told me I was the best teacher. <coughs> Sorry. Another point in the uh, Strategic and Economic Development Plan report says that Ward 1 participants felt it was important to preserve the city's rural character. The Everton Project will destroy its rural character. And I know, Mayor Brummel, you asked us not to ask any questions. I wanted to come and speak up as a millennial, as somebody who is a young person, because I've heard and seen on social media some comments that it's only the old people in town who don't like change. Well, if you're on social media, there's a lot of young people in town who don't want this change. So I ask you guys to think about how does Everton sustain what Warrenville residents desire and like most about their town? Ron, you stated there's always people coming and going. Well, yeah, because we're bringing in apartments, people who are not vested in buying in Warrenville. And how do we bring these new residents into our family-oriented community if they don't have children? I don't want summer days where my kids were running around with the other families, and I knew old and young, everybody was helping me watch my kids turn into Naperville's Rib Fest. I wouldn't let my kids run out of my sight there. And my last comment is, where will millennials, it's been stated at plan commission meetings that I've tried to attend, and tonight, that the hope is that the millennials who get into these apartments will buy homes in Warrenville. Where will these single family homes be? Because from what I hear, people who want to come to Warrenville and raise their families, they can't find anything to buy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Berry. Um, my family and I live at 29 West 420 Townline Road in Warrenville. Um, 
had some uh, comments. Uh, I did some research, and um, first of all, I'm against the project. I don't think we need apartments. Um, I'd be fine with townhomes or condos, but not the apartments. I think we need some ownership uh, for the people there. But this is from the Daily Herald uh, from back in 2013 um, for uh, the candidate profile for the mayor. Um, these are his words, so um, just in comparison with the project, um, the key issues for candidate uh, issue number one, uh, keeping Warrenville stable financially, we have no debt against the general fund and pay cash for everything. I'm, I'm thankful for that, so thankful. thank you for doing that, um, being responsible with our taxpayer funds. Uh, but the second one, um, key issue that you stated was uh, regarding Warrenville expanding. Uh, our Route 59 corridor also provides significant redevelopment opportunities, and we must continue to lay the foundation and prepare for what the community wants to see developed there. I don't see anything where it says, talks about board. Uh, we're all here today because of that. We don't want to see these apartments go in. We, um, we want to see some, some sort of development, but not, I don't think apartments is the way to go. Um, the, uh, the second key issue, that you, or the third key issue that you talked about, uh, we have developed an excellent process to address issues and make decisions that are respectful of or our citi citizens relies heavily on public input. Here's your public input. Um, it's transparent, it's carefully defined, and is designed to lead decisions based on long-term best interest of the community. Um, it is critical that we adhere to our proven process and not be tempted by shortcuts I think this is a shortcut. I think we need to wait. This is the first uh, uh, bid we've been given uh, for this property in what twenty some years, and I think it's a it's a it's a jump the gun situation. We don't need we don't need the apartments. Um, I've also been concerned with uh, uh, some of the uh, reports on consumer reports with the rating. I also found the one point five rating status for MI homes uh, for nationwide projects. Any, we all do online purchasing and stuff. We all check ratings before we buy stuff on eBay and Amazon, check the seller rating. Who, who here would buy something from somebody that had a 1.5 star rating from somebody? None of us would. We'd skip to the next buyer. This is the development we're looking at, the developer. 1.5 rating. Who's here okay with that? I don't, none of us are. Um, so I think that's all I had. Um, oh, on our... On the city website, there's a slogan that says, my Warrenville, my city, my way. And I'm wondering, is that for our citizens or is that for the board and the mayor? I mean, it's my Warrenville, my city, my way. We're letting you know how we feel about this project. I urge you to vote no. The two aldermen are that in the ward where this project is going are, are already stating they're voting no. What's that tell you? That tells you that everybody else lives away from there and they don't really care about the project because it's not affecting them. I live a quarter mile away from this project. I have a fa my family's here, uh, four kids are here out of five. We're here to represent that we do not want this. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Sieber, 29W501 Albright Court. On page 25 of the fiscal study, the second volume, it states, and should not have any negative impact to the property tax burden of the current residents. Some nice words in there, should not. However, the majority of your state representatives, state senators, assessors, DuPage County chairman know that housing, high density residential do not belong in the TIF district. On the physical statement here, you only use and evaluated two taxing districts, the city in the school district, you didn't evaluate the fire district, 
the park district, or the library. And the library will not receive the full amount, as Ron Matzer said, because the state statute under that says a maximum of 120 per individual. 120. And what they have to do is they have to determine their operating expenses each year and then submit that to the city to get a return. So th that's the maximum. It's not, and currently on the property taxes, they're at 128.60 per individual. Oh, they didn't look at the fire department. Fire department will receive over the next 20 years $22,100. That's all they're going to get. This project will produce $4 million. The city will take the $4 million. That leaves you people to make up the difference. And I'd like to ask how many people in this room and at the dais have ridden in Warrenville's ambulance. Raise your hand if you live there. You know then that the worst thing in your mind is sitting down there, call 911, and see John Coakley come up with the acorn van to take you. We need a strong fire department. We need people that have the dollars. I went to the last fire district meeting. I was told they're going to have to raise taxes. So what you're doing is forcing the other taxing districts to raise taxes on these people. These people, everybody that's here, you're going to raise their taxes, and you're going to say, we didn't raise them. We didn't do it. The fire district did it. The park district did it. The library did it. The school district's not going to get all their money. They're not going to get life safety. They're not going to get capital. They're not going to get these. They're going to only get a per cost per student of educating them. That's what they get in this development. However, balanced growth is what an economist would suggest. Balanced growth shows that the individual portions, high density, townhomes, and commercial would contribute the same marginal revenue if we removed the residential property, doesn't belong in a TIF, remove this out of the TIF, we're removing 90% of the 23 million EAV. So we take 90% out, we wind up with a revenue to the city of three point two million dollars. This project with the high density is a negative 34,000 per year or $740,000 for 20 years. So you take care, you eliminate the residential, the high density, city gets 3.2 million over the next 20 years. At the end, you were going to show, and it shows in this particular area here, about 160,000. Without the residential, you get about 168,000. So what occurs is, in the progression of balanced growth, the residential is a negative, even with all of the sales tax, everything.
it is a negative. The commercial is carrying that portion. And that is the figures here, not mine, the figures out of this document. I don't agree with all of them, but I will use their figures because those are the figures. The individual that wrote this never showed up, never came to any of the public hearings. I asked that I'd like to speak to the person, never showed up. This is hearsay. Person never defended it, never defended what he wrote. It's affecting everybody. In this document, that they don't look at all the taxing districts, they do not speak except that one sentence about the taxpayer. There's no evaluation of we the people. It's all, the city's gonna get this, city's gonna get this, we're gonna have development, we need more people. If, we were going to have more people, which would be the solution to all the problems. The city of Chicago would have the best schools. They would have the best place to live because they have the most people. We know that doesn't happen. You have to have balanced growth. You have two other developments of apartments. You've got another proposed apartments in Naperville, at River Road and Deal Road, you won't be able to even go over to I-88. There'll be so many people going back and forth. So from an economic standpoint, this does not pass the evaluation. It's a negative. It doesn't bring us anything. We can get rid of that we should look at, when you're having a TIF district, something that's going to benefit the people. In economics, we have a general theorem. If it doesn't help the people that are here, you must offset that with some dollar expenditure for them. You cannot have development that harms people. It's not an economic principle. It's a political observation, not an economic principle. And then I would also, I would suggest that the city of Warrenville review the appellate court decision where a Burke Avenue resident beat the city. More than 12 years ago, my attorney, Roger Kotecki, sent a communication to this city since my property falls in the same conditions as the Burke Avenue property. I'm sure that the city of Warrenville does not wish to violate my civil rights. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Kristen Goyne and I live at 27 W140 Cove, which is right off of Herrick. Um, I was silent while they were building Herrick Woods. And I was silent while they were bringing in Hubble. However, now I'm not going to stay silent. We have so much traffic from those two growth, if that's what they want to call it, into our community that my son now can't go across Herrick on his bike after school hours. When he would be available to go ride in the forest preserve, he's no longer able to hardly cross because there's school traffic, there's um, traffic of homeowners coming back and forth from work early in the morning and late in the evening. So growth for us has been a sad thing in that regard. When we moved to our community 20 years ago, we actually were looking at Wayne. And I kind of laughed at one of the um, aldermen who said that this isn't a wealthy community. Well, you don't have to be a wealthy community to attract people but a quaint community, a community that we've all talked about with the beauty of the outdoors and the different biking and walking trails and the different just quaintness of knowing who our neighbors are. And all of that is something that draws many, many people. And we are losing that. We've lost it. 
and we're continuing. And I can tell you building all of these kind of apartment complexes and with Herrick Wood, it was definitely just um, townhomes. It has changed the entire dynamics of where I live. So um, I wanted to stress that out. It, it will change wherever you live, it will change. And I know it's changed Herrick Road and where we live drastically. And that is why I choose to help um, fight this. We are obviously against it. Um, but I wanna address the um, aspect of the MI homes. Um, I know one of the aldermen's rate recommended or stated it was a 1.5 rating. This is shocking, absolutely shocking. You do not want to bring in a 1.5 contractor into this community. This community is worth way more than that. Have respect for this community. Bring in what it is worthy of. Um, just to read a few of the reviews of that 1.5, the majority of them really gave like a one star. So things like building contractors for MI homes did not seal the pipes correctly coming from the roof into my attic. Don't buy a home from MI. We have purchased many new homes over the years and have never had any problems until we started using MI. Um, the aluminum on the front porch was incorrectly installed. Lower aluminum was over the upper and letting rain water enter to cause damage plus much more. Their services and repair work are pathetic. They ignore required repairs, failure to talk to me, or even email and return calls. The upstairs floor creaks every footstep, and the overall quality of the trim work and painting is pathetic. So much for the warranty. Obviously, these people do not care. I would recommend everyone stay away. Capital letters, stay away from MI Homes. Buying this house was the biggest mistake we've done. They have a bait and switch tactic from what it would look like in the pictures to what it ended up looking like. I will never buy an MI home again and I would recommend that nobody buy one. If you look at their reviews, they are truly 1.5 stars. It is pathetic, stay away from them. Choosing to build with MI homes is our absolute biggest regret. This has been the most stressful, regretful mess and a complete waste of our time. I would not recommend this builder to anyone from the start of our home in 9, 2016 to 5 of 17. Less than 90 days we were in and we have a leaking roof. Um, sheet rock is falling down from our ceilings. Walls are coming apart. It has been horrible experience from the get go. Take your business elsewhere. Beautiful models, yes, but the homes won't look like that. The finished work on our homes is horrible. Okay, this is just a few of the reviews. Um, I would be embarrassed if I worked for MI, just saying. Um, and again, as a community, we deserve better. Your constituents who have voted you in deserve better. You who are living here deserve better. And um, just as a real quick review, I looked up the Atlantic Company, and they don't have very good reviews either. I'm not gonna sit here and read them, but the people who live underneath their management have not been overly happy. So please consider that. I don't know if you guys have taken into any other considerations. I think that elderly home is a great idea if you're gonna want to do something that would enhance our community, benefit the people, and be a blessing to the people who are from this area who would like to stay in this area as they get older and might not be able to stay in single homes. Please, please vote wisely. Vote for your constituents. Don't vote for yourself. Don't vote for the dollars that would be coming in or not coming in. Vote for your people because that's why we voted you in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my name is Megan Denny, 600 Landon Drive, about 50 yards away from where I was born, two years before the town was incorporated. So a lifetime worn billion, like Mayor Brummel. I actually back up to this property and I have, like I said, been raised there like the other speakers have said, I'm not opposed to something going in there, but again, it's the high density, it's the apartments. The people in the apartments have no skin in the game. They're transient, as Mr. Burning pointed out, it's not a bad word, it's a definition. So probably that's who's gonna wanna go into an apartment that's two, three flights up with their temporary furnishings as they move through town. Are they gonna be able to afford property later on? I don't know if we turn everything into high density housing. I find it interesting that Mr. Collins pointed out that the apartments would have an urban edge. Nice, since we've heard from all of our other fellow residents here who value 
the rural community hometown feel. I think you will lose all of that when you put in the apartments. You won't have those people come to the commons. That's not who's gonna be involved in our community. Alderman Barry points out uh, she is a member of the Elmo Green community. I was also briefly there. The parking is horrible, and I can't even tell you what the parking ratio is there, but on the other side of Emerald Green, they have serious issues with parking. And if you're gonna have a three bedroom apartment, I find it very difficult to believe there'll be 1.9 cars involved. So bottom line is I don't agree with it. And please, you were elected to represent the people of this community. Thank you. Thank you. I've never been to one of these. I feel like I'm in an episode of Parks and Rec for those millennials out there. Figured I'd throw my two cents in as a millennial. Um, I live at 29 West 310 Calumet Avenue East. Uh, my husband and I moved in last weekend. <laughs> so we, yes, we are very excited to be part of this community. Uh, I know we were very specific when we went on our house hunt oh. that we needed to be in Warrenville. Excuse we work me. in Warrenville, yes. Can you give your name, please? Courtney Merritt. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we work in Warrenville, right off of Winfield, uh, right across from the Exelon building. Uh, so we want work here. We live here. Um, and to be honest, I was kind of disappointed when I heard that they were going to be putting the high density housing in. Now, I'm not against developing. Okay. If you guys want to put a Starbucks in, that would be awesome because the, the one off a of deal is kind of a little far away. Um, <laughs> Again, millennial joke there. Um, but one of the things that drew us here is what everyone has been reiterating. Everyone knows everyone. I know my neighbors are here. Came and welcomed us on our first day. So nice, welcoming us with open arms to the community. This is a place that we wanna live for forever until we're dead. Raise our kids here. Uh, I wanna be able to feel like I can just send them outside and the community is gonna watch out for my kids and I don't have to be concerned. Um, I know I grew up in New Lenox and it was a smaller-ish town and it's becoming more developed and it's very different from when I grew up. Um, I used to be able to go outside and play, you know, parents not worry, they'd ring the bell and I'd come in uh, and that's not how it is anymore, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, again, just in summation, uh, that's why we moved here is the community um, I love all of the trees and the privacy and the quiet. We get to hear the coyotes in our yard, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I'm worried that the more we develop, the more that that's gonna go away and it's gonna go uh, against kind of why we decided to move here and raise our family. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Lisa Bear, and I live at 29 West, 420 Townline Road. My husband, Mike, spoke a little bit earlier, and um, I'll just reiterate that we did move here because we liked the big yards, and we'd come from Wheaton. We actually moved here from Ohio about 12 years ago, and when we came to this area, and it was so overpopulated, we were a little bit shocked. <laughs> and so moving to Wheaton, we had very little yard, but um, we ended up moving here because we liked the um, feel that was more like when we were at home in Ohio. So um, what we don't like is that um, that the this develop my development that does back up to us um, will change the things that we love about it. Um, our kids play outside all the time. We know our neighbors. Um, our neighbor moved here bec from, well, she used to live in Wales. She says that she likes it because our whole neighborhood waves to each other as they pass. Um, so there are a lot of good things about it. We've seen everything from coyotes to deer walking down our streets to wild turkeys in our front yard. And um, I'm afraid that the wildlife will start to go away. My kids love to go down to fish um, down, down the road. And I just don't know how much of that is gonna change with the amount of housing that's gonna go in. And again, like the others, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to development. Um, I just worry about the, in, the sheer number of people you're bringing into the area and how much that's gonna change things. Um, well, I wanna address the 2012 um, plan that you all came up with. We just moved here six years ago, so we were not part of that. And I, again, um, agree with the lady before who said I'm curious how much community input was put into that um, because I questioned that too. But what I wanna know is it, 
yes, this development may tick the check the boxes off for what fits within that plan, but it doesn't have a limit on that plan. So how much high density housing can we be expecting? Like you, you want to put high density in there to raise the number of rooftops so you can bring in more um, businesses and attract more businesses, but how much is enough? How much are we going to have to keep putting in? You say that you've already um, added and approved more um, high density housing and apartments um, for the foreseeable future, but at what point do we say that's enough? We need more single family houses. Our uh, family, in the six years we've lived there, every year, and I've never had this anywhere else I've lived, every year we've had a stranger knock on our door, hand us their name and phone number, and said, we want to live in your neighborhood. If you see any houses come up, please call me. I will buy it immediately. Um, they want to live here, and like Annette said, there's not enough for them to buy, and you want to bring in luxury housing, and you, I think you guys are using that as a way of, well, it's luxury apartments and luxury townhomes, so that makes it top notch. But uh, obviously the 1.5 rating may not reflect that. But as Annette said, when they lived in Oak Park, they liked living there because they had close proximity to all of the things that they want. These people in this development are not going to have that, at least not for a long while, because we're talking about way in the future bringing in all of that stuff. So what's going to draw somebody here that's going to want to pay that price tag for an apartment or a townhome that doesn't have the access that she was talking about that they had in Oak Park? They're not going to have anywhere to walk to except that tiny little com uh, commercial strip you're talking about. They're going to have to get in their cars and drive out of Warrenville to go spend their money because there's not going to be anything there to draw them there. And so what happens when they can't get um, you can't get enough people to, to fill the luxury housing at the price level, price point that you're talking about. What happens to those extra apartment buildings then? And what happens to those extra units when you can't bring in enough people because that's not what they're looking for? At that price point, they want more to do in the area. And then um, lastly, I would say that um, I think that um, as, as much as this this might make sense and I understand what the board is thinking when it comes to trying to draw in businesses and you have to have the rooftops to, to bring in the businesses. But I feel like we're doing that at the expense of changing the face of Warrenville. And I would just highly encourage you to think through, I, I know a lot of you, it's been mentioned that they feel like you've already made up your mind and I understand um, that a lot of you have spent a lot of time looking into this, but just hear our hearts and that we love our town. And it's not that we don't want to change at all. We just don't want to change it to this level. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Deb Lavin. I live at 29W476 Town Line. Um, just a few things I'd like to talk about. Just the setbacks. There are one you change from 20 to 10, I believe. You cut it in half. I can't imagine any kind of landscaping in a 10 foot or 7 foot span a uh, couple of shrubs and that's it no no building looks nice on a tiny yard uh, no renter will shovel the stairs at three at three uh, levels nobody's going to go out there if you rent you might if you you will if you own the place but you're not going to shovel the stairs in the walkway if you rent it this is my first um, time actually seeing the uh, pictures of what it was going to look like and with the prairie path right there that will become a drug corridor. And for those of you who are old enough, to me, these apartments look a lot like a miniature Cabrini Green. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doug Stanley, 3 South, 611 Landon. 30-year um, resident of Warrenville for the reasons you've already heard tonight from all my neighbors. Um, the property, I, it's our front door. The property is going to be developed. The property should be developed at some point. Uh, it just, it strikes me uh, when I first started seeing the, uh, the stuff online about it, the number of variances, a, a developer will certainly be looking to do nothing but maximize the site. Maximize the site and the list of variances provided to staff, I'm sure, was, was, a, was a challenge. And that's, that's the benefit, obviously, to lower their costs. That's not the benefit to the community, those variances. 
Um, so it, it strikes me when seeing that and hearing a lot of what we heard tonight that if we are a balanced budget and we are managing our affairs, it seems like a really desperate move. Uh, again, the site should be developed at some point, but this density is wrong. Uh, and it seems like I, I'm not quite sure. It's a conflict for me. I don't understand why the town feels like we're at uh, that we're that desperate that we need to take this first this first proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila, hold on a second, please. I think that mic is dead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. My name is Sheila Wakely. I live at 29 West 463 Amber Lane in Warrenville, and I am directly impacted by this project. Uh, I wanted to say a couple of things. I have lived in California, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Illinois. I have never at a city council meeting been schooled, not once, not twice, by you, Mayor Brummel, this group of people. Let me remind you, these are the taxpayers. Some of us have doctoral degrees and graduate degrees. We're not school children. That's the disrespect that we see, and that's why this project particularly worries us. It's almost like we're the deplorables in your eyes. I wanted to say that I, I handed out 125 letters throughout Warrenville multiple times. The first time, somebody took them all away. I don't know who, I, somebody I guess that was in favor of the project. Uh, after that, I was approached by an individual who related to somebody on the planning commission and told me it was a waste of time because you specifically, Mayor Brummel, have been lobbying behind the scenes for MI Homes. Well, I, I disregarded it. It wouldn't be true. That would be unethical. And you wouldn't do it, right, Mayor Brummel? Then, before the city council meeting, I had two people contact me with the same information. Now, I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not true. But it would be very unethical for the mayor of our town to be taking city council members and planning commission members behind the scenes and trying to ramp up support for this project. It would be un-American. I hope it's not true. But I do see this. Every time MI Homes has come, I've come to every planning commission meeting, every city council meeting. I've been here for 24 years. They, they very almost never have to do their job. Do you want to know why? My husband's vice president and global sales manager for a big company, because you do it for them. You are continually selling this project to your residents, the taxpayers, who do not want it. Many times, they can't even answer the question, and you jump in. There's, there's a problem with that. It doesn't feel right. It feels unethical. Now, living here 24 years, I have seen many projects being proposed. Some have passed, some haven't. Some have been modified. And I've come to all those meetings. What I loved about Warrenville with Mayor Lund and with the different city council members is that you could talk to them. You could actually call them on the phone and tell them how you feel and how it directly impacts you. In this case, at every meeting, and we have taken notes so we can show them to you, no matter who has spoken, you have been condescending and absolutely not giving the respect that you start out every meeting as of late with this project that you support so much telling us to give to you. Well, we want that respect. I'm hoping and praying to God that what I heard is incorrect and that you have not been going behind the scenes before city council meeting and telling people what a great project this is because that's not your job. And it would be unethical. I really pray that's not so. Let me just tell you, I said at the last meeting, I live in a little two-bedroom house on just about an acre of land, and I pay between seven and $8,000 in taxes, and I'm happy to do it, happy to do it. I had left my house to the city of Warrenville and have told that to city officials in my will. That's how much I love this town. But this is so disrespectful to be told that you're going to put not just these apartments within a four-mile radius of this development. It's a matter of almost 4,000 uh, new residents in a period of two years. 
And that was spoken about at a meeting before and verified. It's true. This traffic will spill out on 59, make the right on Butterfield, as we all see during rush hour when they expanded Butterfield, although MI Holmes told me at the first meeting they weren't gonna do a traffic study because they didn't think it was necessary. They told me right in the meeting that. Well, that they make the right turn off 59 and they go down to where? Warrenville Road. Warrenville Road, where we met with you and the city council and the planning commission when we went back and forth about the pavers and making the turnaround. I went to all those meetings because you said that the goal of Warrenville was to make this little rural town and make that the heartbeat of the town. And now these folks, uh, all 600, 700 of them, will be going out, making the right on Butterfield, and because the traffic backs right up to Batavia Road, they'll do what other people from 88 and 59 do. They'll just cut right down Warrenville Road where Sesqui Park is and all the ball fields where our kids play, where St. Irene's is. This, is. this is absolutely something that you need to take into account. Additionally, I went to all the meetings when uh, th the power lines were going in on the prairie path, and you were one of the big supporters of that. And we were told, yes, because I talked to Mayor Lund, so don't make that face. I checked out my facts, Mayor Brummel. And you were one of the supporters of the power lines. Other cities were able to put them underground, but not Warrenville. And we were told, and I verified this, that we would get a million dollars, Warrenville would, to beautify the prairie path. Can you imagine this? So we took the power lines, and now we're taking this. These people are coming to Warrenville because of the beauty of the prairie path and Ferry Creek and the quality of the town. At the first three initial meetings, when people asked them who was gonna pay for the improvements, the bike path, the tunnels, the wa they said Warrenville was gonna pay. They said it right at the meeting. Now I'm telling you, when people say this doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And I have been coming to city council meetings for 24 years, I have never been this upset. Do you wanna know why? Because in the past, when this amount of people would come week after week and express their opinion, the city council and the planning commission actually listened to them. Even if the project went through, they would modify it. But that's not what's happening here. It's not what's happening here. So again, I ask you, I pray you have a clear conscience about, as our role of, as mayor, telling people that this is a great project and they should approve it. They represent the taxpayers. Their job is to listen to what the residents say. I think we've already uh, heard multiple times about this plan that was designed 80 residents and didn't include everybody. I mean. People went and got the facts. Why do people go and get the facts? I heard a superintendent of a school system refute things in the last meeting. Why do they do that? Because they're concerned. They're really concerned. If this gets railroaded through, despite all these meetings, then you have forever changed the culture of our town. And never once have we heard, even when people recommended flipping the condos and the apartments, there was no consideration. But what I was told, even by a member of MI Homes, was that you are fully behind this project. And I, I'll say it again, Mayor Brown, that's not your job. Your job is to lead this town and honor the commitment that you made when you got elected to keep this town growing in the same manner as when people moved here. You said it over and over and over. As a matter of fact, I was at a, pl uh, a planning commission meeting uh, right, right around the time when MI Homes first came about. There was a couple here that lived uh, Ron could probably tell you, somewhere up by Grace Church, and they wanted to put a above ground pool in their yard, and they were like a foot short, and they got voted down because the planning commission does not change uh, zoning and does not give variances to this little homeowner that built a new house on a, a piece of land and wanted to put above ground pool. And that was the uh, statement by the planning commission because zoning is there for a reason. That's what they told this homeowner. And variances are only given when it's absolutely necessary. Let me tell you something. I videoed this whole project. They've already declared that they're gonna cut down all the trees on the east. The whole point of the prairie path is the prairie path. Now you're gonna have apartments where people have to carry their garbage like from here to uh, the library. And it's three floors up. I pay between seven and $8,000 a year in taxes for a two bedroom house and I would never, and I have granite, marble, hardwood floors, it's beautiful. I would never get the, uh, 
the amount of money that you guys are saying that these ho- who's going to live in a home and look out on Route 59 with all the traffic on 88 and the sirens and now no trees? Who's going to pay that money? I can't even imagine it. I just can't imagine it. I just pray that when people come to all the planning commission meetings, 60, 70, 80, and in 24 years, I have never seen that amount of people. And then tonight, despite all the cancellations during the summer where things got changed, that you guys will actually step back and say, this is not a done deal. We're going to think about it. We're going to talk about it. Maybe we can take it but modify it. Maybe we can switch the condos and the apartments. My husband has known me for many, many years. He's never seen me this upset. And we've been married a long time. I'm upset because I feel swindled. I feel that we elected people to represent us, and they ran on platforms, and we moved here for that reason. And you yourself, Mayor Brummel, have supported this type of development in Warrenville up to now, the residential development, and now we're being told it's not possible. I spoke to Joe Calamos, and he told me that commercial development could come to Warrenville, and that's what it was originally zoned, B2. All we have to do is ask. And many of us, especially in this neighborhood, would love to have what we have at the end of uh, Town Line Road, quiet warehouses, very little traffic. We still see, like they said, all this wildlife. But if you put in apartments, three stories, no elevators, the garbage is over there, just six parking lots in front of the pool house, my goodness, and then you cut down all the trees. What's the attraction? So I'm sorry if you feel that I'm being critical. The reason why I raised the volume is because you're not listening. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, and this is my wife, Sandy. We live at 3S334 Williams Road. We moved to Warrenville. Excuse me, Jerry, your your last name, please. Pardon? Your last name, please. Jerry and Sandy. Yeah, I'm Kirshner Schusmith. Okay, thank you. We moved to Warrenville 20 years ago from high density living in Oak Park because of wonderful residents like Faye and Cliff Johnson and Rich and Dolly White, who introduced us to the small town charm of Warrenville. And we love the place. Putting that many people on 33 acres is not the Warrenville that we came to love. And just as Fay and Cliff and Rich and Dolly would oppose this development, so do we. Thank you. Thank you. very gratifying to live in a community with neighbors like you who come out, who speak up, and that's why we're all here tonight. Thank you. Can I say one more thing, please? Thank you. <coughs> Steve Burning, I uh, live on the on Volusia Road, way on the other side of town. As many people alluded to tonight, maybe we did have the first bid that came to the table. Maybe we didn't, but maybe the first bid isn't the right one. Are we marketing this property correctly? Is the city doing what they could do to market? I don't know that answer. I'm not critical of that. I'm just asking. I think we as born billions have a hell of a piece of property here, a great piece of property. You know, I was really saddened (coughs) about a month ago when I heard that this two, what is it, Chris? Two rank hockey venue comes to Naperville, inches away from good old Warrenville. They get the venue. They get th- what is it, 4,600 seats or something? They can put in there and cover the ice and go in, and the taxes, the the, the venue. Build it. They will come. Build it. Give them what they want. Give the millennials what they want. Give us what we want. Some of us want single-family homes so that we can we can move to a different part of town. 
Some, some people want to downsize and go to a different part of town and stay in town. So th my point is, is that if you market it the way it could be marketed, I think we've got a real gem, a real gem in the, in the woods, in the woods of Warrenville. <coughs> but I don't think, I'm not sure that we've done that. And I, I think we maybe did take the first bid that came to town. So I think we should reconsider that. To me, it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You didn't have to sign up. If you decided you want to speak, you're welcome to speak. Okay, back to the council. Comments from the council. Alderman Berry. I have lived in Mournville for 39 years. I have never in my life lived in a single family home. I lived in a two flat in Chicago with my family. I lived in dormitories. I lived in apartments. And now I live in a condo. And I like living with my neighbors. I like living with my neighbors right on top of me. I like living with my neighbors right below me. Um, I live in Emerald Green. I'm not afraid to say it. Uh, we have a very safe community. It is not a high crime community. It has never been a high crime community. Um, that's because the residents there know each other because they live so close together. And um, we kind of look out for each other. And um, we do have excellent parking. Even some people don't think we do. We do have good parking. Uh, we can't park on the street. We do um, have only one garage. Um, parking and one car in the driveway. Uh, most people can get along with that. We do have visitor parking. But um, again, um, I just want to reiterate that when I moved there, there were less than 4,000 people that lived in this town. Many of you have come here since then and uh, have increased the population from when I first moved in. Um, that's okay. It's okay with me. Um, I've had building across the way from me, Warrenville Lakes, Timber Ridge, uh, several different other uh, complexes that have been built. I have no problem crossing Butterfield Wa Road, pulling out onto Butterfield Road. Um, the corners, at both at Butterfield Road, most of them were all empty. Um, there was no, I remember I had to call my mother and tell her that there was um, no grocery store in Warrenville. She said, well, where are you going to go? I said, I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to drive to the place and find, and find a place to, to go buy groceries. I don't know. There's no buses here. She said, well, what do you have? I said, well, we do have a gas station and we have a taxidermist. And she was like, wow. <laughs> um, I was able to walk wherever I wanted. I lived in the city. I grew up in the city. I took a bus. I took, I took the L's. I took everything. Um, I like moving away from that. But at the same time, over the last 39 years, I have been happy with the fact that my neighborhood has grown around me and there wasn't a whole lot of single family homes. It has grown um, with more townhouses and more uh, condos. Um, and I'm the alderman of Ward 4 and we do have single family homes that have been built on Route 59, Fox Hollow, River Oaks, but we also have um, Maple Hill that was also built. And um, yes, maybe the city did make a couple mistakes when Country Ridge was built. Um, we didn't have the staff that we have nowadays and things I think just got a little out of hand, but we back right up to them. And I can say that being the president of the Condo Board Association for several years, um, they basically are good neighbors. They try hard. And sometimes there are people that do move in that are not the best residents. But they do leave because the residents that live in Country Ridge who want to be good residents will 
basically get those people to move. And so um, I'm in favor of this project. When I ran as an alderman in 2005, I said the thing that we need is development on 59. And at this point in time, I don't see that there's a whole lot of developers who will come in and build single family homes on 59 in a corridor where right now you have truck traffic and everybody knows we do now because of the Amazon project and Du Parkway. And um, I think what we've proposed uh, and what MI Homeless has proposed is uh, the best use for that property at this time and for in the future of Warrenville because I think that this project will bring other development. Maybe it will bring other homes. I don't know that. Maybe it will bring other single family homes. Um, but right now, I know that over all these years that there have been very few people interested in that property. It's been for sale for a very long time and there was no developer that would look at it because I sat on the plan commission before I became an alderman. And we get to see who comes forward and who is interested in what properties. And there was nobody, there's nobody that's been interested in that property. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Hoffman? Yeah, I, I'm not against, I'm not against um, development. Uh, I, sometimes people I think think I am because I usually vote against stuff like this because I believe in wise development. And I don't think this development is a wise development. Um, just for uh, one simple reason was if it's going to cost the existing taxpayers higher taxes eventually because of it, that's just not a good um, alternative. Um, <coughs> there again, I go as far as um, I think the reason why the property hasn't been developed in Warrenville, because if you look at Naperville, and to compare us with West Chicago or somebody that, that has even higher taxes is not a good comparison. You've got to compare with your competing town, and that's Naperville. And, uh, you know, and everything else, you know, as far as crime, we always compare ourselves with the best. We don't compare ourselves with the worst. So we need to compare ourselves with um, Naperville, which is one of the best in the area as far as our taxes, and we have to compete with them. Now, if we're going to get commercial developments that's going to be paying for services and not using them, we have to get our taxes lowered so we can um, start attracting those people. And <coughs> they're going to build a $50 million um, uh, um, development. You can only imagine what the extra taxes are. Just on, just on one of my pieces of property, and I've been there 35 years, everybody says a lot of people that have been living in town here for a long, long time, they say, oh, my taxes are reasonable. Well, their taxes are reasonable because DuPage County has a tax cap. And they only go up, they can't go up more than I believe it's 5% a year. All right. <clears throat> Take your same house that you think um, your taxes are reasonable on. Go ahead and compare it. Everybody compares it with, oh, this, this guy here just sold his house. That means my house got to be worth 400000 Now put our tax rate to that and see what somebody that would be buying your house would have to pay. It's very different. Just on, my, uh, just on one, of my, one of my pieces of um, property that I own, <coughs> My taxes are almost $900 higher as if my own um, property value is over in Naperville. And I've been living there 35 years. Now you're talking to somebody that has um, a home that's worth a million dollars or $500,000, you could be talking a couple thousand, maybe more. I, um, that'd sure make a nice family vacation instead of paying taxes. Now you're talking big companies. They're building a $50 million um, um, development. Or that's coming right out of their profit. Housing developments and apartments, they don't particularly really care because they just pass it on. And if they're selling the units, they just, they don't pay the taxes. The person that buys it pays the taxes. And most people don't figure their taxes before they buy something. And um, I just, uh, I don't think this is a wise development. I don't think any of these proposed multiple dwelling complexes have been wise developments. And just because of the tax situation, I think I'll be voting no. Alderman Goodman. As I think about the various proposals that come in front of me, I always try and think about the long-term best interests of Warrenville. I was born in Warrenville. 
I've lived in three different neighborhoods in Warrenville in my lifetime. When I was born, my parents had a house in Summer Lakes. And when I was 11, they bought a bigger house in River Oaks, and we moved. And when I got married, my husband and I were lucky enough to be able to find a house that wasn't just still in Warrenville, it was still in Ward 4 of Warrenville, because I was already a member of this city council at that time, and I wanted to stay on the city council and stay in my ward and stay in my hometown and stay near my family. And I was lucky to be able to find a town home that we could afford in Maple Hill, which is where we live now. So that's my personal experience of living in Warrenville. At different times in your life, you need different types of housing project products. You need different sorts of multifamily, single family, home options. My husband is a brilliant man. And I think I can say that with some pride. Uh, when I met him, he had just finished getting his PhD in physics and he was working at Fermilab. He had just started a week before. And when he moved from Indianapolis to this area, he didn't even consider moving into Warrenville, even though he was working in Fermilab, right on our doorstep because there weren't apartments for him to move into. He moved into Naperville. And I think that my husband is a wonderful Warrenville resident. I think that we're lucky to have him living here. I think that people who live in apartments for some period of time, maybe they're transients, maybe transient isn't a bad word, um, but I think my husband is, is a, an asset to Warrenville. I think he is a community volunteer who has worked for Warrenville and Bloom, planting plants in this community. He has volunteered at Summer Days for the Park District. He is a worthwhile member of this community. And when I hear people <sighs> disparage people who live in apartments, it's hard for me to not take it a little bit personally. I have a lot of friends who grew up in Warrenville and who went to Warrenville schools with me. And most of them don't live in Warrenville anymore. Most of them moved away. Some live in Warrenville, a few, which is great. Others live in apartment buildings, and they live in Naperville, and Romeoville, and Bloomingdale, and Palatine, and Batavia, and a lot of them would like to live here. A lot of them still have their parents living here. A lot of them didn't have apartment options to stay in Warrenville with their families. I would love it if my close friends from high school were still close enough that I could walk to their houses, but that wasn't an option for them. I was lucky to find a house and be able to stay in Warrenville. That was an option for me. I think my personal experience tells me that not every project that comes before this city council is great. I was on the plan commission for six years before I've been on this council for the last seven. And a lot of projects that came up before the, the plan commission for say a, a courtesy review never came back again. The, the developers walked away or the community support wasn't there or the plan commission said that they wouldn't support it. This project has been through a lot of staff review and they've made a lot of changes to it. I think a lot of those changes were for the better. I think that one of the main concerns I heard from people at the beginning wasn't really mentioned by anyone who spoke tonight and that had to do with stormwater and drainage. I'm very glad that those concerns have been addressed at the plan commission level. I think um, a paragraph from the staff report that caught my attention had you know, some, some tremendous benefits um, from the, the use of wetlands and the floodplain storage that's gonna be available in this project. And I think that is an asset to the community. I think that multifamily housing isn't something that increases crime. When I moved into Warrenville, uh, when I was born, um, you know, there was, there was not a lot of crime in this town. And as time has gone on, we've added some police officers. I think when I, we were just trying to think, when Cantera was built, I think we added about six new police officers, even though that is mostly commercial development, not a whole lot of homes there. I think that's about right, about six police officers. 
I mean, perhaps the chief of police can address the very serious concerns that people raised about whether having a multifamily housing unit like this project and perhaps new commercial development will bring crime into our community. I don't know if he has any thoughts to share on that. Um, I think <sighs> Warrenville is a very safe town. That's something that we're very proud of. That's something that we want to re retain. And if that was really a concern with adding multifamily housing, then I think our police department would have raised that concern during this lengthy and exhaustive and detail-oriented process. I don't think that that's really going to be a problem with this project. I, th I think our city is very safe. I'm, I feel very safe every day waking up in a town home in Warrenville, uh, protected by our, our excellent police department. I think that the, the residents who said that we already have too many apartments in Warrenville haven't gotten the kinds of constant mailings from realtors that I get from people wanting to sell my townhome. Uh, multifamily housing is very much in demand right now. I, I got contacted by a realtor last month who said that within the past three months, she personally, this one realtor, had sold 10 properties in Maple Hill. Um, that's crazy to me. I suppose I do have a lot of residents who are seniors and perhaps some of them move into assisted livings or, um, or I don't know, perhaps pass away. I didn't realize there was that much turnover in my community and Maple Hill seems very stable and a lot of the people that I know have lived there a long time. But I don't think that adding new residents is inherently a bad thing either. As Claire mentioned, when, when she moved in just a couple of years before I was born, you know, the population of Warrenville was about 4,000. And there have been a lot of new residents added over the course of my lifetime. People that I know, people who are my neighbors, my classmates, kids I grew up with. And those are wonderful people and they add so much to our community. When I think about some of the transient people who've moved through Warrenville, you know, I think about um, a physicist I knew from India who came to Fermilab for a year with his family. And they wanted to live here for just one year. And they were debating whether to live on the Fermilab property and some of the housing that they have for visiting scientists. And my sister convinced them, she was I think about nine at the time, convinced them that they had to live in Warrenville so that their son could go to school with her. And so they lived in Country Ridge for a year. And you know, Country Ridge is, does have some flaws, but that was a very happy year for us. You know, living within walking distance of these really good friends of ours living in those apartments. And you know, their, their son started a business. He's a social entrepreneur. He, he's developed software. He's, he's a, an incredibly smart young man. And he was able to go to the Warrenville school system for just one year when he lived here and then moved back to India. And you know, these, these people add so much to our community, the, the diversity and the, the different perspectives. And yes, his dad was in town last week. I, I made him dinner. It was, it was wonderful that I'm able to sometimes visit with my friends who live in India because they come to Fermilab to work. We have these brilliant minds from around the world that come into our community. Um, so yeah, maybe we have some transient residents. Maybe not all of them are then gonna be like my husband and buy a house in Warrenville. Um, you know, maybe some will. I think that the objections that I've heard raised tonight about wanting other things on this property, a lot of them are very well founded. People want other things for this property. And there's a lot of things I want in Warrenville too. I think that having multifamily housing, having a few more residents in Warrenville will help me achieve some of those things I want for Warrenville. So I'm going to vote yes for this project. Thank you, Alderman. Um, Chief Tarano uh, retired from the Elmhurst Police Department after 30 years of service as a commander. He's been the chief of police of Warrenville for 12 years. Warrenville has been consistently rated among the safest communities in the state, the top 15% safest. I would consider him to be uh, an authority on uh, what is safe and what is not as safe in terms of uh, developments in towns. Um, specifically, Chief, could you give us uh, some information on how you see this particular development 
um, not the high density uh, developments in general, but this type of development? Have you seen this development in other communities? And what's your assessment on how this will affect our safety? Thanks, Mayor. Um, during my 43 years now in law enforcement, um, what I've always seen as far as um, if you call them high density apartment condominium type complexes, there's a direct correlation between the price of the unit or the rent that's paid and the type of activity that goes on in those units. Um, where I did come from, they were putting up a multi-level apartment building and there was a lot of trepidation. At that time, Elmhurst did not have uh, many apartments and um, the couple of apartment complexes that we did have, they had problems with. Uh, the ones that they had problems with, they were able to turn around simply because uh, they got vested management who updated these uh, apartments. Uh, they had become quite blighted. The rents had dropped. Uh, consequently, when you get lower rents, you get people that come in uh, that co maybe don't have the, uh, the best intentions of the community at heart, and you get subsequent crime problems. This new development that came in <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I think it was a five or a six story residence. Uh, their apartment building uh, had underground parking, um, amenities like a health club on the facility and what have you. Um, I, could, I could count the times on one hand that I ever remember calls for police service. And uh, those were, were usually of a, a medical emergency of some type where an ambulance went because uh, we always went uh, with the ambulances. But I've seen these types of developments. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact, Elmhurst is putting in two more in their downtown area. Uh, I know they're in Lombard, uh, I believe Hinsdale, uh, Arlington Heights. Um, uh, it has a similar type development. And um, you just don't see that type of activity. When I was doing some quick calculations tonight at $1.91 a square foot, uh, with a 533 square foot apartment, you're talking about $1,086 a month. Uh, going up to a, I believe it was a 1,400 plus square foot three building or three bedroom unit, uh, you're talking over $2,700 uh, a month uh, in rent. Um, that's more than most mortgages that I could afford to pay. So I, I, I don't see that this is going to impact those types of things, quite honestly. I think. Um, the people that you're going to find there are going to either want quit, quick access to I-88 because they work along the I-88 corridor or uh, going to a train station uh, because they work downtown. They want quick, quick access down there. Um, my experience, again, from uh, in my past uh, working career uh, was that the majority of these people work long hours. They come home. They many times go out for dinner. Um, it's uh, either usually a single person or a married couple. Uh, once in a while, even the multi-bedroom uh, units are used by, by people who work from home. Uh, they use that extra bedroom either for, for a home office or, or something like that. Um, so, you know, can I make firm guarantees that there won't be any type of crime in those places? Well, I can't guarantee the sun will come up tomorrow, but I, I can say overall track record, um, usually... When, when you look at issues that have to do with high density and crime, you usually look at things like unemployment, you look at the price of the unit, you look at blight, and, and, and these are where you usually find areas where you, where you have pockets of high crime that are condensed. And I think that's the best answer I can give you. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Wilson. I would <laughs> like to make just a couple comments. I don't mean this... Uh, other than a couple of the comments that were made tonight. Uh, one I thought was interesting that talking about the TIF and the fact it takes 23 years before for the life of the TIF. And I just want to say thank you to those people who a long time ago started a TIF for Cantera. Otherwise, I wouldn't be living in Warrenville if it was out those people who took a TIF and did it and survived and brought us where we are as a city. Just a comment. One of the others is that, well, if we have waited, we should just wait for someone else to come along and try to promote it. 
And then the comment was about the new hockey uh, building that's going to go up right there on Ferry Road in Naperville. Well, this property was empty out here. It's been empty for years. And I'm sure the person, when they were looking for some locale to build that hockey rink in, probably saw it. But Naperville has 144,000 people in it. Warrenville has 13,000. So I probably not, may not be the only reason, but when you have more people in a town, you might get a larger facility. Um, the young lady mentioned about if we could have a Starbucks in that property, it would be nice, and I could agree with her there. But the reason we don't have a Starbucks is we don't have enough people that's gonna stop in and buy coffee. The property is there, they could, uh, there have been three people tried a restaurant right on the other side of Route 59. Three different restaurants are there. None of them are existed. They're empty. There's a bank building at the corner of Ferry and Route 59 that closed because no people are there to use those facilities. So my point is you can wait and you can wait, but uh, it's just that this is an opportunity I think the plan commission has done a super job. The people have made many, many changes in from that original proposition that they made. So I just think the, pro, the, pro, pro, uh, the procedure has been followed through and I just wanted to make a couple comments about that. One other comment. I'm sorry, can you, do you mind, we listen to you. Can you be silent while we're talking? <laughs> Thank you, Mary. And just one last comment. The mayor has never taken me behind closed doors or talked to me about this project in any sense of the word of trying to tell me how to vote. I will be voting yes on my own accord because I think it's good for Warrenville and I know that there are a lot of people that were here, they don't want this I think it's gonna be good for the city in the long term. I'm from Ward 2, uh, may make a difference, but uh, that's why I live in Warrenville Lakes, which is a townhouse, and I've been here 15 years in Warrenville. So I just wanna let you know that I think it's good for the city. I think we've done the proper procedures, followed it the way it should have been done, so I'm letting you know I will vote yes. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Davalos. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just have a couple things also. Um, I do wanna thank everybody for coming, actually. Um, I said this before when people come, I think it's a wonderful exercise in um, being a good citizen and the ability that we do this in America and that you can come here. Um, and so I appreciate it takes time. Look, it's 1030 and you guys are still here. I mean, it takes time, it takes commitment. Um, so I do wanna thank you for doing that. Um, the other thing is I wanna remind everybody that the Warrenville website, uh, all of you, some of you have talked about research that you're doing and I hope you've included the website. Um, the way you access uh, the papers on this development are in the business section of the um, website, there's a drop down menu to private development and you go over and all the developments that we're working on, not just the Everton, are there with all the papers from Plan Commission, all the research by the developer and by us. We have our own um, people that we hire to watch out for us and our own c consultants. Um, there's a wonderful article about myths and, fa uh, myths and rumors about these developments that has been written by um, our community development director there's financial information. I mean, it's wonderful. So just as a resource to all of you, um, it's out there. Um, the other thing I wanna, uh, one thing I wanna say is this is a unique piece of property. And one of the reasons, I mean, the, 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 the TIF has helped it develop because with TIF monies, we can do water and sewer and help with, you know, um, lights and utilities and, and different things. But um, one of the reasons it hasn't developed, but it has a great amount of floodplain, as many of you know. And um, 
it would be very hard to pass DuPage County's storm management um, policies and still put enough single family homes there to really make a profit. Um, it's also, I lose my thoughts here. Um, some people have talked about commercial development. And I think all of us who, and you guys have been around a long time, since 2007 and even before, things have changed. Office buildings are sitting empty in Cantera. Um, people, these apartment complexes, and you have to be careful where you put them. No one's putting them down in the middle of Warrenville. No one's put, you know, these are on the edges. So, and there's not a lot of empty land. But these apartment buildings is what you get capital for. How do you think, I don't think someone would loan MI Homes $73 million if they didn't think it was the kind of development that was going to sell. So co big commercial properties aren't going to go in there. We don't have enough people, and that's just not happening. People are ordering online, and you know, look at Fox Valley. You know what's happening. Things are changing, and so we made a commitment to this community to work on the Route 59 corridor and to make it so that you just don't go from Naperville. One of our consultants said, you know, it feels like people drive from Naperville and they kind of have their eyes closed till they get to West Chicago and they don't even know they went through Warrenville. Now, there are some good businesses along there, but it's hit or miss. It was never a very exciting corridor to drive through. And we committed, and Alderman Barry talked about this, we committed, it was the first thing on the strategic plan, is that people, the, the economic plan, people wanted to see something go on. There are other people in this community, I know you guys are all out here and nobody is here, came from the public to talk positively about the development, but there are people out there. We, each of us up here have gotten a series of emails, just like many of you have written, there's another group of people out there that are very much in favor of it. Some woman uh, stopped me on my street and from a walking group and she said, please, please, we want a vibrant community. We want more here. We want restaurants. We want shops. We want things for our kids to do. We want that Starbucks. Please vote for this kind of community because that's the only way we're going to get this kind of thing. And the other thing is <laughs> apartments are hot stuff right now. People don't always want to own homes. Even if they can maybe afford a mortgage, they are either just out of college or they're just getting started um, and they can't afford to buy a home. And so they can afford an apartment. And then when they have kids, some, they'll move somewhere else maybe. But apartments are what's really selling. A and look at DuPage County, it's very expensive. Many, someone talked about their property tax. Oh my gosh, it's expensive to live in DuPage. And so apartments really fill a niche. I got my kids living in apartments. I got my friends' kids living in apartments. Even, even after they have kids, they're living in apartments because it's an affordable option and we need a balance. We don't, we are short on that sort of thing, placed in the right place. And so when we did our plan up here, we and, and, and uh, Director Menser, mentioned this, there were four things we wanted on this property. All four things this developer came and had. So we had an obligation to, to interview and to take a look and to see what, what they had. And this development would not work in other parts of, of Warrenville. In fact, we've turned down dense housing in other parts of Warrenville. We don't just say yes to everybody. And if you read the website where I told you to go, you will see the vast amount of changes that we have asked this developer to do and the plan commission has. But when you have a planned unit development like this, you expect a variance. Because who knew? It's a cornfield. How in the heck were you going to zone uh, knowing what happened to our economy and what's being built now? There's no way you could foresee exactly every ordinance that we would need to develop it. It could be commercial, it could be residential, it could be dense, it could be single family. We could leave it a cornfield, I guess. But you just, you do a planned unit development so that you can bring this all together and you pass the variances you need to make this work on the property, not just for the developer, but for us. Because these kind of developments, this kind of combination, town, ha house, and, and apartments, we've done a few of them. They are gonna benefit the whole community 
put in the right place, and if they meet the criteria, we need this sort of thing to develop that diverse and vibrant community. And this is really the only way right now that we're really gonna be able to do it. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share those thoughts. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Widener. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, we've talked a lot about the 2015 strategic plan, and I think we ID'd a lot of the areas that were most important to the, the residents. And one of the things was that we will develop an attractive and unique commercial shopping area. And I guess that'll be remain to be seen of how attractive and unique the commercial shopping area is on, on this project. The other thing that the strategic plan <coughs> mentioned that we would do would be to try to improve the vehicular pedestrian and bicycle circulation and connectivity. And I think the plan does a good job of that. I think there's a 1.8 additional miles of trails and it connects to the Illinois Prairie Path, truly an adv advantage to the bicycle and pedestrian program that uh, Warrenville is noted for as a bicycle friendly city. But one, one of the things that this doesn't match up with, and I, I didn't hear it until tonight being addressed, is the idea of that we want to protect the city's sense of place, that unique character and charm. The developer didn't speak to this, and the plan commission meeting that I attended, I don't think the developer was challenged by the city um, <coughs> representatives to match up and try to maintain the city's small town character and natural setting. When you look at the plan, the 50% um, of it is green space, but that's all mandated. There's nothing additional, and in fact, the additional green space or the minimums are reduced in the plan. So what 98% of the citizens identified as critical components of the strategic plan, that being natural settings, open spaces, and the environmental qualities was overlooked, I think, when this development was, was, was thought out. Um, it's um, definitely environmentally sensitive, the wetlands and everything, that I understand that that's gonna be a high quality of development, but does the capacity of the population meet the um, <coughs> ability for the green space and the open areas to support it? I, I just haven't seen that, that, um, that there's enough breathing space for the residents there. It, uh, it doesn't seem like a relaxed setting. It doesn't seem like it's, it's, it's reaching out to attain that city, small town charm and character and create that natural setting other than what is absolutely mandated by the wetland um, regulations. And so I guess if I had um, my opportunity, I'd, I'd approve this with conditions and challenge the developer and the city Council and, and the Plan Commission to go back and, and see what variances could be reduced, or you know the request for variances, if any of them could be reduced, and see if we could make this right sized rather than trying to fit so much in there and add the green space buffers and active recreation areas that does reduce crime. Uh, it's, there's been study after study shown that open space areas and greenways and things like that has an impact on crime because people aren't on top of each other. And I think this project should be outfitted for solar. I think uh, elevators are a necessi necessity. And I think I, I would like to challenge the developer to add those components and reconsider some of the variances. Thank you. Alderman Hoffman. Yeah, I just have a question for um, Director Metzer. As far as, uh, you had earlier you had mentioned about the, uh, the average income for a person there gonna be $75,000 a year. Um, and, and, and some of the backup I got, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so, it says um, uh, after TIF District 4 expires, household income of 75, what would the household income of it be now? 
And how many people are in that household? Uh, I guess to answer your first question, what the household income is now, it was my understanding, and I'm not, I, I don't remember reading the specific quote that you said. the facts and myths. After the uh, TIF district, but based on the conversations I've had with the developer and the developer's consultant that prepared that, um, that, uh, that report, the, the way they arrived at the household income uh, number was uh, for the apartments, the individual households would need to make three times the amount of the rent that would be um, paid the housing expenses, rent and utilities. So um, they backed into that you have to over averaging that over all those units that this is about what people will make. Um, and it's a similar calculation for the mortgage rates that they would anticipate people would have for the $330,000 single family or attached single family home with uh, the taxes on top of that. But we kind of that's, kind of that's kind of what I'm wondering here because, like I say, it says uh, average annual household income of seventy-five thousand. It's it's um, um it, that's uh, when completed after TIF District Four expires. Um, so it kind of, that's that's twenty twenty-two years from now. Yeah, I, th what I'm saying and is that how many I, people, how I many don't working believe people that in the in I know the, in that's if I'm assuming I don't have I don't have the page open. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that what you're saying. I, I trust you what you said. I'm assuming it trusts you that you're reading it correctly and quoting it correctly, but based on the conversations I've had with the developer and the developer's consultant and the rationale or methodology that you they use to justify a $75,000 household income, it seems to me, based on that convers those conversations, that that's today. So I don't know if it's today and you know, today in today's dollar, or I, you know, I, don't, I don't know what, I can't speak for the, the consultant that wrote that. I can only tell you what the conversations I've had with the consultant and the developer are. Okay, yeah, because it says here after the TIF district expires, and that'd be 22 years from now. So um, that kind of concerns me as far as um, how the people are going to pay rents at, that, that one was um, $1,700 or something. It was right up there. I well, their rental, the qualification is that they need to make three times the amount of their housing costs on a monthly basis. The house, the household does to qualify. They ha have to provide income verification information as part of the application to to rent in this project. And that's not just this project. This is that's a, a typical uh, criteria that's applied to um, what I would call a institutional type managed apartment complex of this type of quality. They make sure that the people that they're going to rent to have sufficient household incomes to pay the rent on a regular basis. Oh, well, that's just what I'm, that's kind of what I'm wondering about because we're talking about uh, three-story buildings without um, elevators, um, studio apartments. You, know, you certainly can't call an apartment complex that has studio apartments. Says, have you ever heard of luxury studio apartments? Well, I, I, whatever um, I mean, elevators. I, I just want to go on record. I've never said luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, the staff. Well, that's why I'm wondering what the quality is. I never said you did. I'm just wondering what the quality is actually going to be at the end product. And I provided information. The developers presented that, and if that's not sufficient, then I, I, I don't know what I can do to, to to answer your question about the quality of the project. All the the data that I've reviewed. Leads me to believe that it's a very high quality project. All right, thank you. Alderman Davalos, one last comment, two last comments. Um, nobody's taxes are going to go up because of this development. I, I just, somehow that's all I'm going to say. I mean, there is no way that your property taxes are going to go up because of this development. This development is going to benefit Warrenville financially. You have other issues that are legitimate concerning issues, but that's just the one thing that I want to say. Um, also, in a TIF, nothing in a TIF says you don't do residential. We have residential in our TIFs. Uh, there's, I've read the, some of the statutes. I've been at the meetings. Residential is fine in a TIF, and it can benefit because it creates businesses who have more property tax, and you've heard the whole story. The last thing is I was concerned about the elevators also and called Community Development Department, and 
Apparently, this is very common, and I started reading about it all up and down 59, Naperville, Winfield, Wheaton, a lot of these places, just exactly like this, do not have elevators. And so I guess if you need elevators, you just don't, like I need an elevator, so I wouldn't be buying here, but I'm telling you, a lot of young people and other people would be, and the empty nesters would, would rent the... Um, would rent the first floor and uh, it works. It's working and people are renting these apartments and this is what the market is doing. And I think you would find pictures of this very development, not exactly because I think it's a, it's a unique external, de external how it looks, is exactly what's in the architectural magazines, what people are building, you, what people are showing in their community brochures. This is not some odd development. This is been tested over and over and over, and the apartments get rented, and the townhouses get sold. And um, I can't visualize what else would go on this property, and I don't want to see it be a farm field because I don't think that benefits the community. Um, thanks. Alderman Ashower. <coughs> Just a uh, few comments. The We've seen how projects change when things don't go the way they might think they do. They, we have a project just adjacent to us here at the Musselman property that the developer got most of the things they wanted and they left. And we ended up with a far better project from a far better developer. Um, the other things, I, I haven't seen this level of advocacy for a project from city staff including talking points that did not include one factual concern from the 50 to 70 people that attended all the meetings so the advocacy has been for the developer and not for the residents and i am saddened by that um that's all i couldn't have disagree more the efficacy is always for the residents by staff that's what they do ron's been here 25 years literally has been involved in dozens of developments and because you disagree with this one he's out of line i just i'm sorry i can't accept that attack on a man who works his heart out for this town we may disagree on this development we may dis disagree on a lot of things but personal attacks are out of line. I'm sorry, that's absolutely Point of order, Mayor. acceptable. If you're gonna debate this, you have to hand the gavel over to somebody else and. I'm also chairing the meeting. I'm the chair and I'm gonna finish my statement, okay? I have been involved in city politics, if you wanna call it politics, uh, for, s let's see, two years on the plan commission, six years on the city council and 13 years as mayor. Um, to think that I would make a decision that goes flies directly in the face of what I think is the best interest, the long-term interest of the community, um, I guess it hurts me personally because I don't think I've ever done that. I don't ever intend to do that. So fine, you can disagree. You can think this is a bad idea. I think it's a pretty good idea. Long-term, you know, somebody said, uh, a TIF, 23 years, we'll all be dead. What do we care? That's why we sit up here. We care in 23 years what the community is going to look like. That's why we take the flack. That's why we take the pressure because we want to make good decisions so that in 23 years somebody will look back and say, I'm glad they did that because that really worked out well. So really, disagree. Whatever happens tonight, we will move on. Uh, but the personal stuff really is inappropriate as far as I'm concerned. I have two questions for Ron. One, first of all, MI Homes has worked in the city of Warrenville in the past. Have we ever had any problems that would indicate that they're not a quality developer or at least a responsible developer? To the best of my knowledge, uh, community development, uh, public works have had no problems with um, MI Homes. As I said in some of my opening comments, they have shown to be extremely professional, um, very responsible developers and responsive to uh, concerns and issues that we have brought to their attention. Okay, and then the second thing is the significance of the vote tonight. Can you tell us where we're at in the process and what a vote tonight means for this particular project, which way it goes, whichever way it goes? So uh, the, 
the uh, vote by the city council tonight is to accept or reject the plan commission's recommendation and direct staff and the attorney to prepare the ordinance that will memorialize the approval preliminary approval of the preliminary plans um, and various relief requests for this project. If the recommendation is to uh, approve that motion, the ordinance would be brought back to the city council most likely at the next city council meeting, provided there's no hiccups um, or delays in the preparation of the ordinance between staff and the city attorney and the developer. If the ordinance is ultimately approved by the city council, the developer then would need to move forward, would need to move forward, would most likely move forward to prepare their final engineering, final development drawings and submittals. Uh, and once those were completed, they would submit those to city staff for review for compliance with the city's regulations and compliance with the various conditions and requirements of the approved preliminary ordinance. And ultimately, the plan commission would review those final drawings and make a determination whether they are consistent with the approved preliminary plans. And if they were, they would make a recommendation to the city council uh, that the final plans be approved and the uh, city council would have the opportunity to um, take action on the final plans and approve the, those plans. Uh, from my perspective, um, the, the, you know, the preliminary, well, not, I think it's a, from the legal perspective and uh, I would expect that the attorney would chime in if I'm speaking uh, incorrectly, but if the final plans are consistent or substantially consistent with the preliminary PUD plans, they really should be approved by the city. If the city is not going to approve the final plans, this is the time not to let that project proceed. Um, that's why there's a two-step process, because um, it takes a lot of time, energy, and additional money uh, on behalf of both the developer and the city to process final plans. So you don't want to move into the final plan process if, if you're not happy with the project as, or you're not comfortable with the project as it's presented at a preliminary level. Okay, if past this point, it, given a favorable vote tonight, are, are there still opportunities then to work with the developer to work on some of the concerns that have been voiced? I think some of those concerns um, are part of the conditions that were incorporated into the staff report and the plan commission accepted and recommended the city council approve. Um, I do want to be clear that those conditions do not involve changing out apartments with townhouses or some owner-occupied type of um, buildings and they do not involve uh, reducing the density of the project for the, just for the sake of reducing the density. Okay. So, I mean, if they have, you know, to comply with some s uh, specific um, design criteria from a stormwater perspective and it requires them to expand the stormwater detention uh, facilities uh, more than what they are currently designed and that requires some density reduction, that might happen. Um, but just to, for the sake of saying this project's too dense by the time it gets to final PUD, in my opinion, it would be inappropriate to, to require the density to be reduced at that point in time, unless that was you know, a condition that was imposed by the city council tonight. Okay, and then my, my final comment um, involves the plan commission. Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier, I started out in the plan commission. My experience with the plan commission is, again, they are volunteers that show up twice a month, uh, some of them for decades. We have two of them in the audience tonight, the Plan Commission Chair, the VBA Chair, both of which have over 37 years of volunteering for the city and again have literally looked at and vetted hundreds of projects over the years. Uh, somewhere in tonight's comments was the implication that the Plan Commission is a rubber stamp for the council or for the mayor. That's absolute total nonsense. These are independent people who care about the community who look at every development nine ways to Sunday. And again, you may disagree with this development, think it's inappropriate, it's too dense, it's not the right place, whatever. But it's very unfair to impugn the integrity of the people who do all that work for the community year after year after year when you're not here. And most of you I've never seen before and I've been involved for a long time. You're rightfully upset about something to your, your neighborhood. I understand that, that's a legitimate concern but I want you to understand that these decisions aren't, make, aren't made lightly. We just don't say, oh, there's a nice development, let's vote for it and let's move on. There is a lot of thought. Every single concern that was brought up at the public 
hearing was investigated by the, by the, uh, by the city and addressed. The crime concern is a perfect example. This is not most likely, again, the chief can make no guarantees, but this type of development does not increase crime. It's not gonna increase flooding, it's gonna reduce flooding a little bit. We have one of the toughest flood control ordinances in the country in DuPage County, and we have to follow that. It's not gonna overburden the, the schools. Every indication that we've used for past developments to determine how many students are gonna come from a development tells us that we're gonna have a maximum of around 100 students if all of these things are developed. Okay, it was said, well, that means that's gonna put a burden on the school. 100 students, the school district's 13,000 students. You're telling me they can't absorb 100 students over the next five years? That that's gonna make a difference? I'm giving my perspective, I listen to you. Okay, so I support this development because I think it's a good thing for one of the long term. I, am, uh, I respect the work that the staff has done to bring the facts out so that we could make an informed decision up here. I think the developer from our experience and every indication that we have is a quality developer. And I think this will enhance the life in Warrenville, not degrade it. If I thought it was gonna degrade it, I couldn't possibly support it. So disagree with me, but I, I hope you at least see that I'm genuine in my concern for what I believe is good for Warrenville, and everyone up here is the same, and everyone on the plan commission is the same, even though we might disagree. Any final comments? Alderman Hoffman. I, I, I keep hearing about this um, long-term planning. <clears throat> if you look at the, you look at your tax bill and uh, compare it, and I, I've, I've done that, and um, you look at the, um, Last year tax bill, which reflected um, 2016 taxes, Warren bills, the taxes solely paid, pretty much solely paid by Warren bill citizens like the library, the park district, the fire department, the city of Warrenville, their pensions, you add those together, were 123% higher than Naperville. Matter of fact, if you go to Naperville besides their pensions, but they're actually library or park district in their city, you won't see a, um, a, a, a taxing district for the fire department because it's part of the city. And they also have leaf pickup. So uh, that's my concern is where are we gonna go with what we have? And to be putting in developments that said only gonna um, make that worse I can't vote for this. I've lived in town here 61 years. And I planned on living in town here the rest of my life. Um, in all good conscience, I can't do that to you. Thank you. Alderman Wilson. I'd like to make a motion the city council accept the plan commission recommendation. Oh, and we have to. We have the motion and a second. We had the motion yes. and that I call the question. Okay. Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Widener? Nay. Alderman Hoffman? No. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Nay. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Revere? Nay. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Mayor votes aye, motion carries. That's all we have on the agenda for this evening. There's nothing under regular agenda, nothing under unfinished business, no new business, no closed session. I need a motion to adjourn. Alderman Goodman? I move to adjourn. All, in fa all those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries, we're adjourned, thank you.